Our next presentation is Generative AI with Vlad Frazio and Mick Bass. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? All right. So I'm Vlad Frazal. I'm a principal solutions architect on AWS. I'm a, a distinguished certified architect at the Open Group and also an Open Group certification board member. So if you're interested on uh, uh, Open Group professional certification, come talk to me. I would love to talk to you about that as well. And I've been with, with uh, Westview for a while, so I'd love to be here again. And hopefully we'll share some interesting stuff, right, Mick? Absolutely. I'm Mick Bass, I lead the 47 Lining team within Hitachi. Been contributing uh, to the forum from the outset uh, before the forum uh, was, was launched in 2017. And our uh, mission in life is to provide the easy button for use and consumption of the OSDU data platform all the way from how it gets installed from IT users' perspectives to how it gets used by end users' perspective. And today we're, we're kind of focused on that end user value proposition and how we can slice through some of the technical complexity. Sweet, so uh, a quick agenda, right? So we talk about the expectations, where we are, so on and so forth, and there's a demo, right? So let's jump in because we don't have too much time. So expectation versus reality, right? I don't know, I'm, I know I'm that old, so I watch it. Uh, Blade Runner on a, on a movie theater. I promise I was like two years old when I watched that, so I'm not that old anymore, um, actually. So, but when I saw that, I was impressed because Harrison Ford was talking to a machine and said, hey, zoom in, zoom out, move to the left, move to the right. And then fast forward four years later, 40 years later, we got you know, JSON documents and API calls, and that's kind of disappointing, right? Come on, Vlad. He was probably using XML. That's right. <laughs> That's right, so it's progress, right? So anyway, um, that's what users expect, right? The joke here is a serious topic, which is users want something simple, right? So of course, we got the schemas, like I love them, we got the APIs, et cetera, so on and so forth, but users expect uh, a, a, a few more things, right? Easiest, uh, easy things, easy way to use. So where are we now? Let's reflect a little bit, right? So 2023 uh, was the year for uh, LLMs, LLMs everywhere, right? Everybody's talking about LLMs. Everybody's saying, well, I got LLMs to query OSGEO APIs, but not quite actually really that way, right? So anyway, 2024 is the year for solutions. So I believe that um, there's gonna be solutions everywhere. And if you think about the opportunity here, I think the reality is that the OSGEO data platform APIs and the data definitions super expressive, but like in database terms, these are in like third normal form. They're really designed for machines to use them. And the opportunity here is to take some of the, the capabilities to interact in a natural uh, way so that the machine can interact uh, with the data, but guided through uh, the, the dialogue that you're having and the objective that you're pursuing. Exactly, and I, I was watching the other day a uh, presentation from Gartner. I, I advise you to, I would suggest you all to take a look at that, uh, talking about generative AI. And Gartner, if you think about the hype cycle, Gartner believes that you are at the peak of the inflated expectations, it's all downhill from here. <laughs> so I, I think they are right. And the reason is everybody's talking about chatbots, but chatbots is kind of boring. If you think about it, there's been a bunch of chatbots already everywhere. Can we do something more? Can we do more than sex summarization or RAG? Everybody's talking about RAG, right? So, but that's kind of, you know, totally, everybody does that. And is AGI around the corner? I don't think AGI is around there, but I, I truly believe we can do a lot more, right? So, and hopefully we're gonna talk about it with this, right? So I want an assistant. If you think about, this is not a chatbot, right? An assistant, uh, can do stuff for us, can take actions, and can use knowledge bases. I think this is the thing that uh, we want. And of course, LLM is at the bottom there, you know, making all of this possible, right? But we need, let's look at this use case, right? I'm asking a very simple questions. How many wells do you have? Well, for 1,900 uh, wells. Do you have a well log for well 15-9? Yes, I have five well bores. Which one do you want? Show me a cross plot with N5 and Rho before 19. Here it is. So if you think about this, there's more than a dialogue there. The last two parts are not even a dialogue. That's an action. I'm asking the agent to take an action for me. 
and asking the assistant to take an action for me, to do something. And to query there, the assistant has to know the schemas. And that's not, as you were saying, Mick, not trivial, right? Because the way the schemas are made, right? Indeed, indeed. So how can we solve this? How can we do this? Because if you think about that, the needed steps change depending on the task. If I'm doing a task that says, OK, uh, schedule a meeting for me, that's a number of steps. If I'm asking uh, the assistant to do a task that uh, uh, predict a fault for me, or something like that, the steps change. So the tasks change depending on the use case. The amount of steps varies. And an LLM by itself cannot do this, period. It can't. So we need more than that, right? Um, Indeed. And the approach that Vlad is mentioning, where you introduce this notion of knowledge base and actions that the LLM can invoke, really uh, provide us with the framework to start to attack these kinds of problems. Because you can say, uh, I understand some context about the workflow that I'm trying to accomplish. Uh, an LLM is pretty good at reading that workflow description and understanding what you're trying to achieve and then doing the context mapping in two ways. When you ask a question saying, I'm interested in wells, it knows generally from general training what a well is, but more importantly, it's gonna understand how wells are used in the context of this workflow. And then when you ask it questions about uh, go and retrieve for me relevant information or what information do you think I should be looking at, then it can map that question to actions to go run a query and get a list of uh, you know, potentially relevant assets back to provide to you. Exactly, exactly right. So we're talking about agents here. And I hope that makes sense. This morning I was reading a post from uh, uh, Matt Wood. He's the VP of AI at AWS. And he said that the time has come for agents to become mainstream. And I agree, I couldn't agree for obvious reasons with him <laughs> more than that, right? <laughs> with a, uh, uh, this, is, this, is, this is totally disruptive, I think. And it's something that opens so many possibilities because now, of course, we use LLMs to prompt and respond. And, but the LLM and the agent can break down and orchestrate tasks and I think that's crazy. The other day I was testing this at the office and laughing, and someone came to me, Sustin came to me and said, hey, Vlad, did you get a prize or award or something? Because it looks so happy. I was like, no, it actually, the agent was freaking dumb yesterday, and he's so smart today. So <laughs> it's amazing to see it learning things and, and growing, right? So anyway, uh, it completes tasks. Uh, I, we have a demo we want to make, so I'll, I'll rush a little bit here. but. The chain of thought trace that I'll show today that I, I experience every day working with this is, is just out of this world, right? So agents use actions to get work done. So for example, list abandoned wells. Here are the wells. Send them to my team, a mail sent. This is another use case with another set of actions with different stuff. An LLM cannot do that, right? And we need more than that. And, um, I promise you, these, these, and I, I will show you, this mark that agents get is just mind-blowing, right? And there's different actions, assistant actions, utility actions, which is more than Q&A. Does, does that make sense so far? Is, is that, hopefully it, it does. It does to me. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's talk about uh, one of the, uh, one example, right? This is something that we are working actually right now with a, uh, uh, a couple of customers, right, we're discussing this, uh, which is uh, to talk about CCS, right? Uh, more than a couple, actually. So think about this. This agent starts with uh, uh, searching the knowledge base to find the schema. This is not trivial, right? Because it has to find the schema, it has to find the fields, it has to find, it has to understand what's going on there uh, to then take an action, like making the API call, right, Mick? And then, after finding the schema, it searched the API. It calls the API, right, uh, uh, to find an OSU. And then it could go to a CCS database, for example, to check for permits. So that's the power of what we're talking about here. The example we're going to show is with OSU search, but there's a lot more that can be done with agents. It opens up an amount of possibilities 
as Mick was saying, right? So we cannot create an agent that is domain specific and, and can take actions based on that knowledge. So anyway, I hope and, that's... Uh, and what's important about this approach is it focuses the LLM on the part of the problem that's actually really good at, which is mapping from a description in one context to uh, a, a, a set of needs or a, a response in another. It, it can describe as, it was, as if it were advising you um, to solve this problem, it might make sense to take step one, then step two, then step three. And now you're empowering it to not like try to make up what happens after step one, but to say, you can run a query for that. And the data that I'm showing you, it's not information that I'm providing. It's information that came from your system of record that is likely relevant in this context. So this is one architectural example, right? But there's a lot more. So let's jump into the demo. And I hope this works. Is a recorded demo? I hope it's working. So anyway, there's, uh, there's two sides here. They told me not to move much, but the left side is the side that shows uh, the, the uh, action, which today is a question that I'm making. And here on the right side, you're going to see the trace, right? There's three steps over there. Uh, you can try this yourself. Uh, Hopefully think, it's playing. I think maybe the video is not playing. Let's try pushing this button again. Yeah. Hopefully it's playing now. Oh, yes, it is. Now I can see it's blinking over there. Okay. So I apologize for that, for uh, wasting a few seconds. But uh, this is the idea, right? So I'm going to ask a, uh, a question here to exemplify. And yesterday, by the way, someone came to, to me at, um, um, and, and asked the same question on a different way. So uh, the question I'm asking is, what are the coordinates for, well, BRK06, right? And someone asked me yesterday, change that question. Ask for what is the latitude and longitude? And it worked, right? Because it's a different thing. So you can see here that the first step, uh, the agent, and this is not my prompt. This is a default prompt coming from the agent, right? The agent first understands the API. So this came from the open API spec uh, that I'm highlighting there. And then the first thing it do, it's doing is uh, it's evaluating if it's malicious or trying to manipulate the behavior. And, uh, so it's not. So then it has, it's taking a few steps to solve that. So the first one, this is the prompt that I gave. And there's no prompt engineering here. I just said, you are an agent that can perform OS just search for well and well bore. Why well and well bore? Because I had only those two schemas. I was you know, just doing a demo for the sake of this. right? So it, you can see that it has here. And, and the answer already came, so it, it works, right? But let's keep take a look there. And this is the part that blows my mind when you think about this. The agent is, is reasoning, okay, the user asked for the coordinates. To answer these are first, I'll find the schema name. Second, I'll build the API query with the schema name and search criteria. Three, I'll call the, I never, I, I didn't program this. It's doing this by itself and it's crazy to see. Um, then I'll provide the coordinates. So first, I'll find the schema name. And how can you not be amazed by this? I was looking at this, and that's why I was laughing the other day at the office. Anyway, so here you can see the schema. It found the schema name from the knowledge base, which is, you know, it's a, uh, uh, we can talk more in detail about that, what it is, right? But it's a knowledge base. Um, and then the prompt is growing because it's adding more information about itself and sending again, right? So here's reasoning how it should answer, right? And the format it should answer. Then the next step is talking about, you know, it's the same thing, right? The prompt is growing a little bit, but you can see here now that it's got the API, it's got uh, uh, some results already, and it figured that shows that Wells have a schema name of OSGU WKS. Okay, I love the, uh, the names we have for schemas, but that's not user friendly, right? <laughs> so, especially if we have like 650 of them. And he founded another schema named for well bore. I will use this, uh, this schema to search for a well. And you can see here's the payload. It's creating the API call by itself. So it figured that because of the API spec, it had to uh, offer kind first and query later. And it figured that the schema should be the well. And it figured by itself that the field that would search to find for that particular well was facility name. I never said that. I just provided the schema, that small prompt at the beginning, and a few other things that I can show to you all. But here's, the, here's the, what's coming. Here's the JSON coming back. And uh, I, I, I like JSON documents, but not that much. And 
where are the freaking coordinates, right? And which one is the latitude and which one is the longitude? How do you figure that out? So eight figure. And this is the part that, that uh, really, I think is the ice on the cake because the, the next, the search API returned well data. The coordinates are located in the spatial location, WSGS80. <laughs> it figured that by itself, right? And coordinates and have the values. So it figured which one is the latitude and which one is the longitude by itself using the knowledge base. I've never developed this. As, as Akim was telling me the other day, the new programming language is English, right? <laughs> it, it truly is. Um, I'll provide the coordinates to the user. Here are the coordinates. Ta-da. <laughs> I think this is freaking awesome. So. so there's a lot going on behind the scenes here, but you can see that uh, the process is to take the problem apart in the same way that you as a user would need to take it apart. Um, and provide the ability to inspect the intermediate results to provide traceability about what is really happening. So I think we are in, the, uh, we are in a moment of disruption here. I, I truly believe that. We are in, at, the, at the edge of seeing something amazing, the amount of possibilities that is open. Because the function the agent is calling is a lambda function. The lambda function that I created, it's, it's a stupid lambda function. It takes the, the, uh, the payload, calls the API without doing anything. There's no processing there. The agent does everything. So imagine the possibilities. You can have a, a specific agent for a specific task. So we, we'll get there. But now, this is the work we're doing with uh, ET, into EDI. This is the OSGU. Uh, product that uh, we have on AWS, right? So we already have, you know, uh, generative AI uh, during gestion, right? To, to generate the manifest and for legacy integration with the transformer. Uh, this is public information, right? It's, it's something that we have out there, and I'm showing that it's possible. The idea here is that it's possible, it's mandatory for all of us to integrate generative AI into our workflows, right? Think about the uh, innovation, innovator's dilemma, right? And where we're heading with uh, making this capability available in the EDI data platform portal is to realize this promise that people were talking about with OSG from the beginning. They said, today, if I'm, if I'm an end user and I want to get to relevant data, I got to go have a conversation with this data manager and wait for a long time for some stuff to show up before I can even like be sure that it's the right stuff. Um, and uh, and so instead, I'd like to have a system of record where everything's in the cloud, I can stream everything, it's super low cost for me to assess suitability for use, and I've got really good assurance metadata about what should be used for what purpose. So uh, what, what we hear from users is that the schemas are great, the APIs, like, they, 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 they provide all the stuff, but it's really hard to answer even simple questions like, can you find me the things that are related to this well? Um, and this makes that uh, really quite straightforward. So, you know, related assets, rather than trying to hard code that and navigate as the data definition shift, we can use the knowledge base, uh, literally, you know, read the data definitions in the repository as they're published by the forum, and the agent will help us navigate to the appropriate materials. Exactly. So I, I can see a future where there's no more search ever. Uh, we can just talk and ask questions. Uh, we are working to and providing a set of APIs, functions, and knowledge bases for everybody to use, right? This is, uh, a lot of this is going to be open source, available to all our customers and partners. And some lessons learned real quick here, right, before we go to Q&A. Uh, text summary is easy. Search is easy. We, we need more than that, right? Uh, results are highly dependent on the LLM used. If you're using one LLM and use another one, uh, it makes a difference, right? Uh, agents are showing great signs, uh, but there's room to grow. Uh, Pre-existing pre functions and tools help accelerate. That's what we are uh, aiming to do, to share tools that y'all can use to accelerate uh, innovation. And this is what I'm here. I hate to say it, but I'm here. I hear a lot that from the field, which is not many people like OSGU search syntax, right? Machines uh, love it. Yeah. People tell me sometimes I'm like a little more like the machine, uh, and so like you know, many of us can cope, but like we really want to hit the the sweet spot for yeah. everyone who's here. Yeah. So what is next, right? Uh, conversational interface with EDI. 
uh, new actions and tools added, integration with SDK CLI. Uh, this is something that I'm working as well. Uh, integrate into the EDI Admi UI, uh, right, Mick? Yep, absolutely. More Gen AI, more Gen AI. Gen AI everywhere. <laughs> and hopefully going to get to the Blade Runner stuff. And we want to hear from you. Uh, these uh, kinds of demos, they're, they're interesting to start conversations, but you know, I'm super excited about how this approach might interact with project and workflow service, for example, because now you've got a team of folks that are interacting around an objective, and uh, you can have an agent like this that's a full-fledged participant within your, your collaboration. Yeah, so try it yourself, right? My suggestion is, uh, is start doing it, right? Building public, like uh, uh, OpenAI says, right? Building public. Uh, Start doing. Start with a basic search, then advanced search, then core services, then who knows, right? Start using it. You can try. There's a few links here. There's uh, other links out there. A bunch of ways of doing this. If you do not want to use a specific vendor, uh, start agents with a lang chain. Uh, if you want to know more, I can help you with that as well. Um, and that's it. This is our LinkedIn. Uh, connect with us, ask questions, and I hope this was uh, entertaining enough and. You got you guys scratching your heads and thinking, wow, there might be something there, right? Questions? Can I take a selfie? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to show to my wife that I'm actually working here. <laughs> We should have spent more time on the his questions, so we could. <laughs> All right, fellas, thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it. Good job. Thank you, man.